Well, well, well. We're gonna uh, walk through the diagnosis of a vibration caused by a tire here. So this is actually a brand new tire. So technically, the customer's complaint is not that the tire vibrates. It's brand new, I'm installing in my own vehicle. This is what came off. So nicely worn, but I get all my stuff, no vibration, no pull, alignment's perfect and, and whatnot. And that's 50,000 miles. Um, not easy miles either. So this one that I just mounted um, is gonna vibrate. I can guarantee 100%. I could balance it perfect, but it will still vibrate because if you look here, we're showing 35 pounds of road force variation. So on this little diagram right here, it's saying the sidewall is kind of soft on this side, and then it reaches a peak firmness there on that uh, bright, thick red coil spring. So that's essentially a hard spot in the sidewall. So. Um, that is a problem, and but that's common. That's very typical for tires, especially these. These are 315, 75, 16, it's basically a 35. Um, there's my foot for reference. It's a big old girl. So um, because I know it's going to vibrate, I'm just going to fix it right now. Here's what we're going to do. Um, this machine is the Road Force Touch. This measures the wheel, not the rim. The rim is part of the wheel, but the actual wheel diameter and the you know this wheel when this roller comes down simulates the road force um, basically we've got uh, on the wheel a little flat spot you know kind of like a bend basically and if you think about it um, this hard spot here in the tire as it goes down the road that becomes kind of a lump because it doesn't flex in as much as the green parts that hard spot is going to be a lump going down the road well, if you think about it, if we have a flat spot, which is basically a low spot on the wheel, and a lump, which essentially becomes a high spot on the tire under load, we could line up the lump on the tire with the flat spot on the wheel, and it'll become a less severe lump. How much less severe? Well, currently 35 is no good, and it's projecting through an algorithm that if I road force match this, I'm going to get it down to nine. Nine is great. I mean, on a passenger car tire, 15 is kind of our limit. On a LT tire, you know, we may go up to 23 or so. Um, and these are LTs off of my Hummer pickup over there. So what we're going to do right now is uh, follow the steps. So here's step one. It's going to have us, well, pick. We'll, we'll press this button right here. All right, tire. So we're making a mark on the tire. So we'd basically go to the tire, um, and actually it's slightly, slightly different than before. So you see I've got a mark there. I try to save some time by, by uh, pre-marking it, and sure enough, it's just a hair off. I'm not sure if it's off enough really to make much difference, but we'll go with the latest and greatest measurement. So right where that laser is, I'm going to mark the tire. Um, in fact, I'm going to mark it down here so I don't line it up to the old mark. <laughs> and that's kind of how it goes. I'm cheating with chalk. I don't actually have my um, tire, tire crayon here. You can still see it even if it's black. So we've marked the hard spot on the tire. Now we're gonna mark the, remember, the hard spot on the tire is just marked. Now we're gonna mark the low spot on the wheel. Press that button again. And it's going to go, see here, we're marking the wheel. It, this is really not difficult. And you'll notice I've saved the time by making that mark already. So now we've got uh, both of those two marked. My next step is I'm going to pull this tire wheel assembly off of the balancer, put it back on the tire machine, let the air out, which kind of sucks because it's all aired up to 50 PSI and that took a while. Um, but to get an accurate measurement on here, it has to be uh, aired up to the spec and I run 50 on mine. So um, I'm going to break it down right now. Uh, it's too hard to use one hand, so I'm moving it over. All right, so when we do this, um, let me make sure my hose is hung out of the way here. When we do this, we don't actually have to break the bead with the shovel. Some machines have the shovel, some don't. Because um, basically what we're going to do, we're going to bring these over. And these are going to essentially massage the bead 
and break it. So I'm running 16, so that should be pretty close right there. I'm still waiting for the rest of the air to come out, but we're close. Checking where they're hitting. Okay, we look pretty good. And I just lubed this, so normally I would really recommend lube. Keep an eye on that bottom roller and on the top roller. So with one hand here, I'm not breaking it like a shovel. I'm, I'm, I'm turning it, applying a little pressure, turning it, applying a little pressure. We can even zoom. Okay, now I've got the bead broken on the top and almost on the bottom. So, I'm gonna work a little bit more. Um, we can also lock this in right there, so that way I can go the other direction. Okay, so now what I've gotta do, we're basically gonna line up that mark with this mark. Um, so, Normally this is really easy, but because this tire is so stinking wide, it is a big pain in the butt. Um, so I may not be able to show you this, but let me try to loosen these up and just see if my body weight can hold it. No, <laughs> no, it's throwing me around. So um, I'm gonna pause for a quick second. I'm literally just gonna get this tire to slip until I get those lines lined up, right? We made that mark and that mark. They need to be clocked together. All right, so with some wrestling, boom, I got this tire to spin, and I've got our wheel mark lined up to our tire mark. Now, um, I mean, it's not really a point in this video, but as always, when you're doing this kind of work, keep keep careful with that TPMS sensor. Don't break those because you're in a rush. Because <laughs> you're mad you gotta do this job twice <clears throat> to make it not vibrate. But um, it's well worth it. Take it, you know, that's why I want to do it on this one. I drive this truck as my own, and I would, if somebody came to me, I would pay the extra money. Because otherwise, you know, these tires I got 50,000 miles out of, I don't want to be dealing with a vibration for the next 50K. You mean? So I recommend personally Road Force balance on every tire, although it takes more time. So I would go ahead and charge more money. So I'm going to air this back up to the 50, which is. Um, the spec for my particular application. We'll swing it back over and we'll do a redo. Okay, just got it on. Now you really need to make sure it's super tight though because when you road force balance it with the roller, it puts a lot of extra force on it. So um, in this case, again, you know what? I've actually got this set to P. I should really change it over to LT. Um, I, I don't exactly remember how but it doesn't really matter because 23 is, is really what we don't want to go over for a LT truck tire. Um, so now that we've gotten to this point, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and redo the road force. Um, okay, we can go back to balance. I'm going to put this back on and lower. Now I didn't set the tire pressure on this machine. I set it over there. So I'm going to tell it yes. Yes, I absolutely set it. 100%. So first what it likes to do is measure in balance. And in balance will give you vibration. But remember, you could balance a square. That tire could be a big square and you could balance it. But it's certainly not going to be smooth going down the road. So when it lets that roller go down, that's measuring the diameter. And then it's going to actually apply the force. Uh, you know to simulate what it's like going down the road so this is the this is the money right here I got a lot out of balance um, but that's great it didn't get to 9 but it got very low which is 13 um, for a tire like this that's sweet so now I still have to balance it so I'm not gonna go through showing you how to balance balance is balance balancing it before with the tire in its previous position it would have balanced but going down the road it would have given um, a vibration specifically at higher speeds so um, after i balance this and get it on this is actually going to be the left front tire so i definitely want that one to be um, good but because the customers do tire rotations we really need all four to be good so this one is fixed